So I'm going to talk a bit about chaos architecture and, and then wrap up and um, get Nora on to t tell you how it really works in practice. The way I think about chaos architecture is about four layers, two teams, and an attitude. And the bottom layer is infrastructure. This is all your zones and regions and data centers and the machines and things you've got. You want to make sure you have enough redundancy here that if something goes wrong, there's enough stuff left to get the work done. Right? That's the basic principle of redundancy in the infrastructure level. Above that, you've got a switching layer. And the problem with the switching layer is that it's the thing that has to route around failures. And it's probably the least well-tested code in your entire system. Right, because it only gets exercised when something goes wrong, and its job is to avoid the broken thing and use something else, maybe scale up some extra resources. This is the code that gets executed when you fail over to another data center or a zone or a region. And you know, how do you exercise that code? It's really critical. How do you switch customers so that they always can see a working system? And then we have these applications. What does your application do when something goes wrong? Does it just crash, fall over, go into infinite loops? Or does it actually have some graceful, um, some algorithms in it that, do, that sort of get some graceful degradation in them? And then the top level is these pesky people, <laughs> the users <laughs> and the operators. And you can get a perfectly working, incredibly reliable, robust system, and the users will screw it up. Right? There's lots and lots of examples of outages caused by confused operators when the system was trying to cope with some underlying failure, or they were running through test processes, and the output was like just got confused, and you broke everything. Rebooting is usually the wrong thing. So how do we train people to get through this? Um, Fire drills, right? Everyone here has been in a fire drill. You've all stood in the parking lot and taken, you're taking the elevator, not taking the elevator, go down the exit stairs and stood in the parking lot. It's a, it's a, it's a universal thing. Everyone in the world has been through f the same fire training. It's one of the most universal safety codes that, that, that you can find. And it's boring until the building is actually on fire, and then <laughs> lots of people get out safely because they can and they know what to do, and they know not to try and go down the elevator, you know, take the elevators, and they know where to meet in the parking lot, and you know that everyone got out alive, right? So here's the question. Who runs the fire drill for IT for your systems when your computers are on fire or broken, right? What is that fire drill? And that, that is what I think is the core idea behind the chaos engineering team. If you're trying to explain this to management, what, this, what is this thing about? It's like running fire drills and really testing that you have the disaster recovery processes and exercising all of the error handling code paths uh, that you have in your recovery systems.